Accounting Equation and Excel. Invoice created from a check which was created from a purchase order. Get ready and some coffee because we're building the accounting foundation. The accounting equation using Excel. So we are in it. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But... But that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. So if you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there, or you can just construct your own worksheet as we go from here, or possibly just follow along with good old paper and pencil. If you do have access to this workbook though, three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank. Example, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on is where we started with a blank worksheet but are basically continuing with a template at this point. However, we will be adding to that template as needed as we go. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing and what we have done thus far. We're building our accounting system with the accounting equation, the accounting equation in essence, acting as a trial balance from which we will construct our major financial statement reports, balance sheet income statement, income statement sometimes called the profit and loss. We started out with our beginning balances, which we imagined we pulled in from a prior accounting system, then looked at some standard transactions that are often there when you start a company file, but aren't things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis, that being the need for capital, for cash, so that we can invest in the startup costs of the business, that cash typically coming from the owner or owners, or from a loan, or possibly a combination of the two. We then used that cash to pay for some of the startup costs, the investment, and the things that are going to help to generate revenue, inventory, property, plant, and equipment, that is. And then we finally have some transactions where we're making revenue, selling inventory and selling service types of items. We're going to continue with that process here. Now, uh, selling inventory, so we're going to have another invoice type of form, remembering that when we look at these forms, we want to keep straight in our mind what the definitions are. In other words, in normal parlance, in normal terms, we might call it an invoice or a bill. We might say we're billing the client, we're invoicing uh, the client. But from a data input standpoint into the accounting system, we're talking about the data input form that is used. And typically, that's more specifically going to be the invoice form in particular, and it's going to be increasing the accounts receivable rather than recording a payment that received at the point of sale. So what we're going to imagine this time is that someone ordered the inventory, right, with a, with a uh, purchase order or someone requested the inventory. We then ordered it with a purchase order. We paid for the inventory on our end and now we're going to provide it to the client. Now, as we think about that process, notice that normally an accounting system in like Excel doesn't have as much linking capacity for the particular forms. The double entry accounting system is great. That helps us to stay in balance, great internal control. The subledgers are great because that helps us to track the accounts receivable by customer and the inventory by inventory unit. But uh, we, we can't as easily tie the actual journal entries in 
from data input form to data input form. Whereas accounting software has everything that we're doing here in a transparent format, but the forms themselves can sometimes be used as a link to better see the audit trail through those data input forms and possibly use those data input forms to then generate the next data input form in the process. So we'll try to discuss how that might work uh, as we add the add thinking about the added features that might be in play in an accounting software to have more audit trail than even in a double entry accounting system, either using an accounting equation or a double entry debits and credits accounting system. Okay, so let's go back on over to our blank tab and we're gonna say that this happened on 123 and we're gonna say that we're gonna invoice for inventory. Invoice for inventory. We're gonna say that we're gonna have an ELP. This is gonna be the inventory items that are gonna go on the invoice. 50 units. We're gonna say this is for Eric Music. That's the customer. And then we're gonna say that we have the EPSH 10 units for also Eric Music, which I misspelled up here. Eric, Eric. Okay. So, so we're going to say the sales price is once again, 500 and 400. We don't know what the cost is. Now the, let's go ahead and indent this for formatting sake, for formatting sake. Let's go to the home tab, uh, and then go to the alignment and indent. Okay. So, so notice what we have here. We're going to create the invoice and then we're going to record this on the sub ledger because it is an invoice that we're going to have to then uh, track and receive a payment on we'll record it on the sub ledger for the cost and units of inventory the cost isn't the 500 and the 400 but we will see that on the sub ledger beyond that however i just want to imagine that eric music the story here is came into our shop our guitar shop and said i would like these 50 elp guitars but i don't like the ones that you have because i want to make it some crazy leopard color or something like that or some crazy color or something and we're like okay uh we can order those for you but we don't want we don't have them in the shop because frankly you're crazy and the color is kind of gross and we don't want them <laughs> now we don't say that but that's kind of like what we're thinking we're like it's weird man but we're like okay we're going to order that we'll order those for you but we want to make sure that that when we order them for you we're going to turn around and invoice you once we get the order so what would that process look like that would mean we're doing a custom order from our our vendor so that means <coughs> when we made first we might make a purchase order to our vendor now we haven't been recording transactions for a purchase order because the purchase order is the one data input form or one of a few data input forms that doesn't actually have a financial transaction related to it so remember the idea of the purchase order that would only happen if i'm purchasing inventory from my vendor i'm going to go to my vendor in this case is epiphone who sells us the guitars that i'm going to turn around as the middle person and sell to eric music when i go to epiphone uh if i have more more power in the relationship if i have more leverage I, I might not have to pay for the inventory when I request the inventory. That's what a purchase order is. Manufacturing companies often have that when we manufacture things like I want a thousand cups made in China or something. We might be able to request the cups. They ship them over. Then we check that they're all there and then we pay for it, right? So that means the purchase order is unlike what we would have on uh, buying something from Amazon or something, in which case... We haven't yet received the inventory, but we pay for it at the point in time we, we request it. With a purchase order, the purchase or, purchaser isn't paying for it at the point in time they request it. They're requesting it and they expect to receive, in our case, the guitars with a bill in it that we will pay at a later point in time. So you can imagine that if someone came in and they said, Eric Music wants these specific guitars, then I send a purchase order over to Epiphone I could put on the purchase order that these guitars are for Eric Music, my customer. The vendor, Epiphone, doesn't care about my customer, Eric Music, but I might be able in accounting software put the customer on there to help me to remind myself that when I get those guitars, I need to turn around and invoice Eric Music. I'm not going to put those ugly 
colored guitars in the shop. It's not my style, man. I can't do that. But <laughs> so so then when we get the when we get the guitars, then we're going to get a bill in the box. Now, if the bill was in the box of guitars, we can either enter the bill that we got into our system as a bill, in which case we would increase accounts payable and pay it later, or we can just pay the physical bill off with a check form. So we never entered a bill form. We just paid it off with a check. And so that's what we did here. Now, when we pay it off with a check, we might be able to link that check or create that check basically from the purchase order. If it was an accounting software, right? We can look at the purchase order and say, okay, the purchase order matches what we have here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna build basically the check or copy the check from the information from the purchase order. And that might pull in the Eric music. So now when I pay for the, for the stuff, then I, I might say, I want to make that billable. There, you might have a term for billable in, in the software, which means when I pay for it, I wanna turn around and then invoice which will link once again, the payment of the inventory to the, to the invoicing of the inventory. Now those systems aren't always perfect. I just want to point out though, that you might be able to link those things out in accounting software where, and that gives you an added level of connectability that's over and above the normal, just accounting system of the double entry accounting system with sub ledgers that we're working on here. Okay, so that's where we're at. Let's record the, the increases here. We're gonna say accounts receivable. Now, now notice now we are selling to uh, Eric Music. Now, if it's an invoice, they might have sent a purchase order to us now we requesting the, the, the uh, guitars. And in which case we're going to ship them, you know, the, the guitars. And then once we ship them, we have a receivable. The invoice is in the box, right? And that's what we can kind of imagine we're doing now, right? So then we're gonna have to collect on the receivable. So now we're gonna say that we had 500, uh, 500 that we're sending out times uh, 50 units. And then once again, we have to do the sales tax, which is 5%. So I'm gonna say that would be 25,000, but I'm gonna go back in there and take that whole thing times 100%, 1.05, which is 105%. That gets us to the 26, uh, 26,250. All right. The other side of that transaction is going to go to re revenue and sales. So I'm going to be in the sales revenue account, and this is going to be equal to, this is only going to be the 500 times 50, no sales tax included on the revenue side, because we have to put that off income statement on the liability sales tax payable, therefore is going to be then the 500 times the 0 0.05. So let's double click on that 500 times 0 0.05. So now we've got the 25 plus the 25,000 is the, uh, the 26. Just hold on a second. 0 0.05. This isn't quite right. How many units did we have times five units? Is that right? We wanted 50 units. So this needs to be 50 units times 5%. Is that what I put over here? Right. So this one is 50 units times 5%. Okay. So that 1,250 and the 25,000 should tie out to the 26,250. <clears throat> Let's double check that. Copying down our accounting equation. <coughs> we'll copy this down, copy this down copy this down red turns green that's good let's copy this across and then we'll add it to the sub ledger so i'm going to put i'm sorry zeros across the board eric music is the customer i'm going to keep that in mind as i do this to do zeros across the board and then eric music we don't have up here in our sub ledger so i'm going to put my cursor in uh column a o and i'm going to insert next to it to the left. So I'm going to right click and insert, put in Eric music. And then we'll put this down here to do it. Uh, where did it go? So we're at, that's why the zeros are here. Cause now I can see the zeros lining up, but boom, 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 boom. Eric music is going to be equal to, uh, just our portion that was put into the accounts receivable. I'll pull it from the accounts receivable here. 
Uh, I'm sorry, that includes the sales tax that we're going to have to collect, is what I meant to say. So then I'm going to see how this is the running balance. I have to add this added cell to it so that the running balance picks up the balance in Eric Music. And then I can copy the running balance down. So my total AR should be 34, 420, 472, which should match what's in my sub ledger. Sub ledger. And if I copy those 34, 472, I think that adds up. All right, so that looks good. Now I'm going to do the uh, inventory afterwards. Uh, uh, let's just do the first half and let's do it to this one too. So we'll say same process here. This is going to be equal to 400 times 10 times 105%, the sales tax 5% plus 100%, 105%, 1.05. That's at 4,200. The other side is on sales, but on the sales side, it's just gonna be equal to the sales price 400 times, how many units? 10, sales price times 10. And then the sales tax is gonna be off income statement in the sales tax line, which will be 400 times 10 times 0.05. Let me show you that formula. That 400 times 10 times 0.05, so the 200 plus the 4,000 should equal the 4,200. Looks like it should, it does. Let's copy this down. See if we're in balance in our formula, assets for that transaction, liabilities, equity. We'll copy the zeros across the board, zero, 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 and zero across the board, zeros across the board. And there we have that. And we'll once again put it in the sub ledger for Eric Eric Music equals the amount that went into AR 4,200. Copying down our running balance. That brings us to 38,672. And 38,672 should be this, this, and this. 38,672. Okay. So now let's do our inventory side of things. So I'm going to put this on the bottom or first I'm going to go to the view tab and unfreeze the panes. Then I'm going to scroll all the way down to put this in the bottom corner. So it's in the bottom corner and then let's put it a little bit further down. Okay. And then I'm going to put my cursor right here so I could see these at the same time when I go to my split pane and then I'm going to go in the top bit. And so I'm going to scroll up on the top bit all the way to our, our, uh, ledger over here. I'm going to get rid of, I greenified these. Let's ungreenify so that I don't get confused. I should have done that last time. And so this one needs to be ungreenified because we have new stuff happening now and the green will confuse us. That's for the current stuff only. Okay. Oh no. Why did that happen? Okay. So now we're going to say that we sold once again, the ELPs. So we have another balance down here. This happened on 123. So I'm just looking down here, 123. We sold, let's say negative 50 of these. Now the cost, we sold them for 500. They cost us 440. Multiplying that out, 50 times 440. Make this cell a little bit larger so I can see what is happening. K okay, stop pasando. Passando a key. This is going to be 50. I'm just pulling this over to the outer side. 50 times 450 for the inventory side. There it is. Let's put an underline here. Now, wait a second. This is the wrong one. This should be an ELP. Let's undo that whole thing. You messed up, idiot. Okay, there's no need to be rude about it. I could keep that balance there. It should be over here. Pull it together, man. Okay. Okay. I know what I'm doing. This is going to be the balance. Okay. We already have. So this was the last one that happened, which I don't have a date on. Okay. The balance is going to be here. <clears throat> That's annoying. <coughs> I'm not going to mess with that now. I got something in my throat. All right, I'm ready now. <clears throat> All right, this is going to happen on 123. 
once again, we sold, we're saying negative 50, and these cost 400. Multiplying that out, 50 times 400, make this a little bit larger, and then pull that out into the inventory column, 50 and 400, or 400 up here. So here's my, so I can see my headers up there. And if I multiply that out, this is gonna be 50 times 400. Okay, let's put an underline here, uh, home tab underline, and then we'll sum this up equals the sum. 55 minus 50 is five. They all cost 400, so we have five units left after this times 400 gets us to 2000. I'm gonna make this green because that's my latest activity. Okay, and then we have the EPSH. Okay, EPSP. And this, oh man, why does that keep happening? EPSH, okay. So here we go, we're gonna say this is the balance on 123 and these we sold negative 10 and they cost 320 so this equals 10 times 320 i'll make that larger here i'll make that green now so i don't forget pulling that to the outer column same thing in the ending balance negative 10 times 320 multiplying across 10 times 320 underline home tab font group underline that means how many units do we have left? We had 15 minus 10, gets us to five. They're at 320. Multiplying that out, five times 320 is 1,600 left. All right, so now we're gonna use these, these cost amounts to record the, the second part of the transaction, which will be the 3,200. And what did we come up with over here? The, the 20,000. So let's unsplit. I'm gonna go to the view tab, get rid of the split. Go to the right, scroll up, put my cursor on A4 so I could see those headers. Freeze the pain. Freeze the pain, please. I don't need the pain moving around. At least stop the pain from moving. All right. So now we're going to say, maybe I want it to move. It's been in one, the pain has been in one place for too long. I need it to move. Could I just let it hurt somewhere else for a while? It's going to be 500. 500 uh wait no 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 that's the that's the sales price it's going to be 50 times and then i'll go scroll up to, to that elp i think it was 400 but we're gonna do it with a link here <clears throat> there it is they cost 400 that should come up with 20,000. so enter there's the 20,000. i'm gonna make that negative because the inventory is going down and then the other side of that is on the cost of goods sold, which is going to be going down as well by the 20 thou, keeping us back in balance. So the net income uh, impact is 25,000 minus 20,000, which is, of course, 5,000 net increase in net income. We're still back in balance over here. That looks good. Let's do the same thing for this one. This one, we sold these EPSHs. We sold 10 of those times. Let's scroll up to our subledge, subledge again. And that's the other green one over here. It was down here, I think. There it is, 320. And that should come up with 2,500. I'm gonna make that negative because it decreased it. That's what's gonna go into the cost of the goods that are sold to put us back in the balancing. Therefore, the net impact on net income, 4,000 minus 3,200 is $800. Back to the green over here. So we're back in balance, baby. And then let's put the total or the balance, bring over the balances. Let's put some underlines under it before we do that, keeping it nice and neat, nice and tighty, tighty. We're gonna go, here we go. It needs to be tighty. And this is going to be underlined. Okay. Then we'll sum this up. Equals the SUM of the last balance plus the current activity. We will copy that. Roger, roger that. Pasting it down. Throwing it down. Pasting the formulas only. 
pasting the formulas only pasting the formulas only okay that should put us back in balance let's copy our balances down to see if we're back in balance do 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 oh no i'm dragging it not copying it and that red should turn green good put an underline up top over here boom underline all right let's double check that our inventory balance here is correct it's at the 15 so let's check that by going once again to the view tab unfreeze the pane scroll down to that 15 and i'm going to put it on the bottom put my cursor here and then freeze the pane or split the pane oh it's too far down that's too far unsplit let's put it like right there and then split okay and then i'm going to go back up top and check my balance over here in my subledge so there it is 15 which is all the ending balances here see there are all the ending all the green ones on the ending balances so that should tie out to this which it does so i just need to check my check figure i'm going to adjust it to that number it should turn green so sub ledger ties out all right Mui b to the n unsplit back to the left scrolling to the top cursor in a uh four view tab and freeze the pane all right let's do it one more time ultra vase ultra vase that was fun muy divertido ultra vase por favor 124 this is going to be invoice well, we'll just say this equals the same thing we're invoicing this time for a gsb wait a sec gsb we have 10 10 of those and this is for music stuff store so we'll try to do this a little faster because we've seen it before it's an invoice so that means the account and it's, we're going to sell them for 777 sales price not the cost all right accounts receivable is going to go up by the 777 times the number of units which were 10 times the sales tax which is 100 percent plus the 5 percent 1.05 105 percent okay other sides on the sales sales side is going to be equal to the 777 times the units of 10 not including the sales tax because that's off uh the income statement it's on the balance sheet on sales tax payable this is going to be equal to the 777 times the units 10 times the sales tax rate 0.055 percent here's the formula there it is 10 times 0.05 and that plus this should equal that which i think it does but let's double check it in our formula by just copying down the accounting equation that red should turn green if we're good we are let's put our zeros across the board then we'll do the sub ledger then we'll do the second bit decreasing the inventory and recording the cost of goods sold so we'll put the zeros across the board zeros across the board zeros across the board for now so i could see where the sub ledger lines up and now we're on the sub ledger this is going to be for music stuff store we don't have them yet so i'm going to put my cursor in ap right click and insert so we can add another customer called music music stuff store i know it's a generic name uh that's the point it's a generic problem here I guess that's the point. And so this is going to be equal to the uh, amount that we increase the AR by 8159 because that needs to match our sub ledger. But I can't just copy this down because now I added a new column. So I have to make sure to pull this over so my running balance can then be copied down. So now we're at 46830. And that should match what's in the AR. If I was to add this and this, 46,830, I think it is. Okay, now let's do the sub ledger for inventory. Putting, or let's go ahead and go to the view tab. Freeze, unfreeze the pane. Unfreeze the pane because it needs to move. The pane needs to move. It's been in one place too much. It's aching. Okay, and then we're going to go up top and say, uh, we're going to split split here 
and then I'm gonna go up to the top window and go to the right to my sub ledger so we could fix our sub ledge. Let's ungreenify what we did before. This needs to be ungreenified because we have completed that process successfully as far as I can tell. And that is something to be celebrated. And then uh, on this one, where's the other one we did? Oh, there it is. This one needs to be ungreenified. Okay, so now we have a GSB. I think that's on the right here. There it is. All right, so this is our prior balance was here. And so now we're here on 124. So I need to format paint this. Let's just format paint this down to the rest of them. Type 124. And so we had a decrease of 10 units. They We sold them for 777, but they cost 598. Therefore, we have cost of goods sold of... 5980 ending inventory is going to be decreased by 10. We only have nine of them. So this is where something is wrong with our sub ledger because we're going to end up with a negative one. So just to recognize that, that's how things can get kind of messed up. So we're going to deal with, we're going to say that's, we're just going to say, okay, that's weird, but I had the guitar on hand and it wasn't here. Something's wrong with my sub ledger and I'm going to have to fix it later because this doesn't make sense, right? When I sum this up, now I have negative guitars, right? But I'm going to I'm going to deal with I'm going to keep that for now. This is going to be this times this. So that means we actually have a negative amount here, which again doesn't make sense because something is wrong with the physical count to what's in the actual subledger. But we're going to say we need the subledger tie out, so I'm going to keep that for now. I'm going to un uh, freeze the panes, <clears throat> unsplit, move it to the right, put our cursor in in uh, A4, freeze the pane, freeze the pane. Now that the pane has moved, we'll freeze it again so it doesn't hurt as much in that spot. Okay, so then we're going to say in inventory, this is going to be equal to 10 units times, and then I'm going to scroll up and find that amount of the cost in my sub ledger. I'm just going to find this in the in the GSB, the green one. So there's the five. That's how much they cost. That's going to give us the 5980. But it needs to be negative. So I'm going to double click on it. Just put a negative in front of the 10. Decrease in the inventory. Other side going to the cost of goods sold for the same amount, which should put us back in balance. Net impact on net income sales price minus the cost of goods sold should be 1,790 on the net income. All right, that puts us back in balance over here. At least it should, it does. Let's put the balance, let's bring down the balances. Let's first do an underline, keep everything uh, underlined. I need to have it separated. Otherwise, everything's going to mix together like having the peas mashed in with the mashed potatoes on the plate. And that's not how you do it. That's not how it works. You got to keep them separate. If you, you have to put an underline so you know which things are grouped together properly. So then we're going to say this is equal to the sum of the prior balance plus the current activity. Boom. And then we're going to copy that and paste that across the board. Pasting the formulas, pasting the formulas, pasting the formulas, boom. There we have it. Copy down to double check our ending balance is still in balance. That red cell should turn green. It does, that's good. Put an underline under these, home tab font group underline. Let's double check our inventory number now. Here's our inventory, I'll put it on the side. I'm gonna unsplit the panes, view tab, and uh, I'm sorry, unfreeze, then scroll down so I can put that in the bottom corner. There's where our inventory number, I'll put my cursor right here. Let's go up a little bit more, right there. And then that should be good. And then we'll split the panes, go up top, just double check that my inventory sub ledger, let's fix the total in my inventory subledger. So that 9,000 is the, is the sum of all the ending balances of, of all my inventory units. 
and and it should be equal to my new balance over here which is now nine uh six nine eight which it is green zero has been populated that's good let's ungreenify the uh one we were working on because that has been completed successfully once again we'll make it back to good old blue and uh and then this is our balance let's put the balance down here so that looks good all right and then we're going to go to the home tab and i'm sorry view tab unsplit all the way to the left cursor all the way up top we're on a4 freeze panes all right so now so just a quick recap here notice that our double entry accounting system quite tedious to have to deal with that sub ledger and software can for, can kind of do that for us for the sub ledger for accounts receivable as well as inventory however the complexity of setting that up can vary and we saw that we can at least get a sub ledger that ties out to the general ledger with our normal double entry accounting system in say excel with a sub ledger however within accounting systems you have an added level of connectability which gives you an added level of audit trail where we can actually kind of connect the forms together so that's the the level up that we could have remembering that if eric music and music stuff store came to us requesting inventory that we purchase from our vendor we might be able to put the customer on the invoice requesting from our vendor which again the vendor doesn't need epiphone doesn't care about for us to buy it from them but it might help us once we then get the inventory to then create either a bill form or in this case we created a check form that pulls in once again the customer to it from the purchase order connecting that customer along the way reminding us that we need to turn around and uh, invoice the client for these particular guitars that we bought custom for them and then once i enter the bill or the check i could once again add the customer into that form which isn't useful for the bill or check going to the vendor the vendor doesn't care about it but it might be useful internally to then turn around and generate the invoice from that bill or or uh uh or check form so then we can create that now again some accounting system isn't perfect with that process you kind of have to be careful with it because if you make something billable sometimes that kind of confuses things a little bit but the the journal entry will be in essence the same journal entries that we're using here but again you could have that added level of connectability to kind of remind yourself that you custom ordered these invoices for a particular customer possibly possibly making it a little bit easier to generate uh, the actual invoice and possibly giving you an audit trail so that you can tie together the specific purchase of that inventory that you purchased specifically for a particular customer okay